This is an introduction to smog. In an article written just this last summer, the Los Angeles Times reports that the war on smog has been called one of America's greatest environmental successes. Decades of emissions cutting regulations under bipartisan law, the 1970 Clean Air Act, have eased the choking pollution that once shrouded U.S. cities. Cleaner air has saved lives and strengthened the lungs of Los Angeles children. But now, air quality is slipping once again. Bad days are ticking up across the nation, and emission reductions are slowing. The most notable setback has been with ozone, the lung-damaging gas and smog that builds up in warm, sunny weather and triggers asthma attacks and other health problems that can be deadly. In a 2018 publication by New York University and the American Thoracic Society, they found that health effects from ozone pollution have remained essentially unchanged over the last decade, stubbornly high. But first, what is smog? The aim of this discussion is to gain an understanding about how human activities have physical, chemical, and biological consequences for the environment. The learning objective is to explain the causes and the effects of photochemical smog and methods to reduce it. The essential knowledge is about photochemical smog and its formation, the environmental factors that affect its formation, where photochemical smog is at its highest, and the basics of how it can harm human health and the environment, and finally, how it can be reduced. But first, what is smog? Smog first became a reality in Europe in the early 1900s, where it was common for there to be a thick gray haze produced from the burning of coal for industrial purposes, for energy production, or for the heating of homes. The word smog comes from a combination of the words smoke and fog put together. Since this time, it has become much more prevalent across our planet and it's even changed form. The newest form was first recognized in Los Angeles in the summer of 1943. Visibility was reduced to only three city blocks and people suffered from the burning eyes, lungs, and nausea. The phenomenon was termed to be a gas attack and it was even theorized that it could be an act of war. It wasn't until the 1950s that it became clear that automobiles were actually the main culprit. That's when a chemist who was working in a specially equipped Los Angeles Air District laboratory determined the two chief constituents of automobile exhaust, airborne hydrocarbons from gasoline and oxides of nitrogen produced by internal combustion engines were to blame for the smog. His research highlights the reaction of sunlight with the automobile exhaust and industrial air pollution, which became the foundation for which all of air pollution regulations are based. Specifically, volatile organic compounds are the compounds that can easily become vapors, such as carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, chlorine, and sulfur. This word is sometimes shortened to box. Box are also directly produced as a byproduct of gasoline and automobile exhaust. Secondly, incomplete combustion also creates nitrous oxides. Together, volatile organic compounds and nitrous oxides produce secondary compounds of pans and ground level ozone. As previously discussed, there are two types of smog. For each, please note the environmental conditions that are required for each, as well as the sources of pollution. The first is sulfurous smog, or gray or industrial smog, which is associated with weather that is cool and damp. It's composed of particulate matter and sulfur dioxides, which is the result of fossil fuel coal burning. The second is photochemical smog or brown smog, which is always associated with weather that's sunny. That's because sunlight is required to facilitate the creation of secondary pollutants. It's composed of nitrogen oxides, ozone, and hydrocarbons, and it's the result of gasoline emissions and ultraviolet radiation. It's said that this makes the sunset look beautiful because these pollutions get suspended in air particles. Tom Petty says in one of my favorite songs, All or Nothing, at twilight time, the smog makes a rainbow. This diagram details the formation of photochemical smog. In section A, you see nitrogen dioxide produced from natural and anthropogenic sources, and it breaks down to produce a free oxygen that combines with diatomic oxygen to produce ground level ozone. In section B, ground level ozone plus nitrogen monoxide can produce diatomic oxygen and nitrogen dioxide. This is the natural process. However, in section C, under the buildup of photochemical smog, you see nitrogen dioxide producing ground level ozone and nitrogen monoxide combining with volatile organic compounds to produce photochemical oxidants and together with ground level ozone, that produces photochemical smog. 
Review of photochemical oxidants. First, the formation comes from the incomplete combustion of fossil fuels that produces many harmful compounds such as hydrocarbons and nitric oxides. Together, in the presence of sunlight, a chain reaction occurs and there's a buildup of these chemicals as detailed on the previous slide. Over time, there's a production of secondary pollutants which cause even more harm to human health and the environment. Photochemical smog is capable of inflicting irreversible damage to human health and the environment. Even short-term exposure to photochemical smog tends to have ill effects on both the young and the elderly. It causes painful irritation of the respiratory system, reduces lung function, and difficulty breathing. It's even more evident while exercising or working outdoors. High levels of ozone can also trigger asthma attacks because the smog caused increased sensitivity to allergens which trigger asthma. People with pre-existing health conditions such as respiratory diseases are sensitive to ozone. Children and the elderly are, or, or people with poor lung function carry a far greater risk of developing respiratory illnesses from photochemical smog than healthy adults. In the environment, photochemical smog can have a devastating effect. The collection of compounds in photochemical smog causes problems for plants and animal life. Some plants are highly responsive to ozone and photochemical smog can decimate these types of plants. Ozone causes necrosis, which is the breakdown, and they tend to see these patterns on the upper surfaces of leaves of trees. Ground level ozone can also interfere with the growth and productivity of trees, and the effect of smog on anim animals is similar to the effects on humans. It decreases the lung capacity and lung elasticity.